Hello and welcome to Reading the Library Book. My name is Emily. This is my book and my podcast. I'm reading you the library book chapter by chapter and I cannot wait to hear your thoughts, my, my young friends. So here we are, chapter three. Chapter three. Under other circumstances, I might have been glad to have the entire library to myself, but without books, no way. I tried to figure out what to do. My first instinct was to just wait for my dad to come back down in that comfy chair. But then I had a terrible thought that maybe he'd vanished in the bookmobile, along with all the books and the librarians. I didn't think so. I was pretty sure he was all right. For some reason, I felt like I'd know if my dad were in trouble, too. But waiting for him didn't seem like the best solution. It looked like I was the only one here, and so I was the one to investigate. In the detective stories I'd read, the first steps were always to look for clues, so I wandered around the shelves of the children's room, hoping to find something. I took out a notebook and a pen, and I wrote down everything I noticed, even the little piles of dust on the shelves. I looked for footprints, but so many people came through the library every day, I realized they'd be no help. I looked at the puppets in the children's room, which remained, even though all the books had gone. There were markers for the easels in the art corner, and the beanbag chairs were still there. No one had left any messages on the windows that I could see. Finally, I came to the shelving cart I'd hidden on yesterday, and for a moment considered getting in it again, just for comfort when I noticed there was a book on it. A book. One book left. They hadn't taken everything. It didn't look like our usual library books. The cover seemed to be made out of leather. It was all brown and wrinkly. The pages were yellow and a little uneven. It looked like a very old book. I examined the cover. There was nothing written on the front. No title, no author. Just a blank. The binding, though, said, A Book by Dorothea Crane. And it had the little bluebird sticker that our library put on the binding of every book. I opened it to the front page. It didn't have a title page. It didn't have any of the information you usually find at the beginning of a book. It didn't have the author or title or date or publisher or anything. I turned another page and found a dedication It said, for you, take care. What did that message mean? Take care of who? Of what? And was it really for me? Then I laughed at myself. It was a book. (laughs) It couldn't be just for me. How silly. I turned another page, and there was an illustration of our library. I didn't know our library was in a book. That's pretty special. Why didn't anyone tell me? Maybe that's why this book had been saved when all the others were taken. The next page was an image of books, all stacked up in precarious towers. Some of them looked like books I'd read. When I looked closer, I saw that their spines had little blue birds on them. It wasn't just the library building in this book. It was the books, too. I turned the page. It had only two words written on it. Save them, it said. The next page said, follow the leaves. And it had an illustration of a bright red leaf. The next page was blank. And the next. And the next. There were many more pages in the book, but they were all empty. I looked around. There wasn't a leaf in sight, just empty shelves, and no one to ask for help. Normally, I could read a book to get more information or ask a person, but there were neither books nor people anywhere to be seen. I supposed I'd need to leave the library to find help or find the leaves. I decided to bring the book with me. 
As the sole remaining book of the Don Powell Public Library, it felt like it was my duty to look after it, to protect it from the fate that the rest of the library seemed to have met. It didn't have the plastic cover that most library books did, so I wrapped it in my jacket and put it in my backpack. I headed for the front door, passing the circulation desk, and was about to leave when I realized I hadn't checked the book out. Just because all of the books were gone and there were no librarians left didn't mean I should just forget all the rules. Luckily, I'd seen the checkout process so many times I knew exactly what to do. I took the book out of my backpack, unwrapped it carefully, set it on the counter of the circulation desk, and turned to the back page. The Don Powell Public Library pocket was there in the back, and I pulled out the piece of paper that was in there. It had no one's name on it. So I was about to be the first person to check out this book. That was exciting. That had never happened to me before. I wrote my name carefully on the first line of the card. My teachers were always telling me my handwriting was atrocious, so I was careful to print slowly and carefully. There was a stack of return slips nearby, so I took one, found the rubber stamp and ink pad, and stamped it with its due date. Then I slid the return slip into the pocket slowly. As soon as the paper reached the end of the pocket, lights began to flash. The sound in the room seemed to suddenly disappear. It felt like being in an airplane and suddenly having my eardrums expand. I quickly closed the book, bundled it up in my jacket, and put it in my backpack. The adventure stories I'd read had taught me that when the environment gets suddenly weird, it's time to get out of there. There were two sets of doors. The first led to a small entrance area where people hung up flyers and left brochures in a rack. When it was raining, they would often shake out their umbrellas there. The first set of doors out of the library opened easily. A simple push, and I was standing by the brochure rack. The second set was more difficult. I gave them a push, but nothing happened. The bar on them did stick sometimes, so I put a little more shoulder into it. It didn't feel like the usual stickiness of the door, and it didn't seem to be locked. It had the strange feeling of bending somehow, like a bubble expanding as I pushed. I leaned my whole self into the push bar and felt that strange bubble sensation again, like the door was a balloon. But I didn't stop this time. I just kept leaning into the balloon, and then there was a pop, and the door opened, and I was outside. But outside looked entirely different than it usually did. There were no cars going up or down the street. The trees were dropping leaves. That was usual, sure, for this time of year. But they seemed to be dropping leaves quickly and continually like a red leafy waterfall. The trees whooshed as they dropped their leaves. The leaf piles were growing higher and higher. I'd never done any jumping in leaf piles because I was a little worried about what else might have ended up in there. Sticks? Glass? I didn't know. Maybe the sidewalk would rush up to meet me too hard. But these leaf piles had just formed and there was no one around, so it suddenly seemed like the perfect time to jump in. So I just threw myself right into the pile, hoping that it would be soft and pleasant. And it was. Softer and more pleasant than it had any right to be. Fallen leaves should be a little scratchy. These were soft, like moss. The trip was also much longer than it should have been. How big was that leaf pile? Just how tall? Finally, I landed, gently, as if I were a small boat bumping into the shore. I pushed the leaves aside from over my head and found my way out of the pile. I pulled leaves out of my hair, out of my clothes, and I finally looked out at the library again except it was no longer my tiny red-bricked library. Where my library had been was a grand white marble gateway. White marble steps led up to the entrance, and on each step was a red leaf. Follow the leaves, the book had said. So I climbed the stairs. At the top, I found myself in a portico, I knew it was a portico because I'd read a book about Greek gods and goddesses, and the book had said that Greek temples had these sort of covered porches called porticos. The columns had been carved to look like people holding up the ceiling. The stone faces of the columns were all different. 
but they were all holding books with different kinds of writing on them. One of them had Ex Libris carved into it. I knew Ex Libris meant something to do with libraries because my grandmother had given me a box of stickers with those words on them to put on the front of my books. She said it was so I could know which books were part of my own personal library, separate from my public library books. There were doors to the left, straight ahead, and to the right. All of them were closed. I followed the trail of leaves across the floor of the portico to the right where the leaves dead-ended at a dark, heavy-looking door with a shiny brass handle. I could see the edge of a leaf sticking out under the door, so I tried to open it. The handle didn't turn. I guess it was locked. I tried to peek into the door through the keyhole where light seemed to be shining, but all I could see was the light. I knocked on the door quietly, but nothing happened. So I tried to knock a little louder. A gruff voice behind the door said, What's the password? I panicked. Password? The book that sent me here hadn't said anything about a password. Should I make one up? Was it leaf? Or book? Or library? Finally, I just decided to go with the truth and said, I don't know. That, my friends, was chapter three of the library book. So friends, I have several questions for you, especially my young friends, but my older friends can chime in as well. (laughs) Feel free. But young friends, please, I have several questions for you. Number one, uh, do you think these chapters should have titles? I am reading right now a book called, what's it called? The Secret Keepers, um, which is very interesting. I'm just at the very beginning. But um, I, I noticed that it had names and titles for chapters, and there were kind of illustrations for each chapter. And I wondered, should I, is that a thing that you all would enjoy? Do you appreciate it, or do you not care? Are you just like, yeah, I like to just know what's next? Um, so I was wondering if you had ideas about that, whether you prefer it or you don't. And if you do prefer it, would you please, as you listen to the book, send me your ideas for what each chapter should be called? If you think it should be called chapter one, you don't need to send me that, although I would still be delighted. (laughs) Um, But if you have ideas for what chapters should be called, please tell me. I'm also wondering if this book needs a better title. So as you listen to the book, do let me know if you think of other titles that you think will be more enticing than the library book. Um, right now it's called the library book because that's the first, well, actually it's the second thing I thought of. When, when I started this book, it was going to be just a short, quick, little tiny uh, picture book. And it was called The Library Kids at the time. And then I changed it to The Library Book because it wasn't really about the kids. It was just about the one kid, Leandra. Um, anyway, but I think there's probably even a better title somewhere. So if you think of one of those, please tell me that as well. Um, and, uh, also I just would love to hear what you're interested in, what you're liking, what you're enjoying, what's speaking to you, what, um, yeah, what, what, what is interesting to you and what you wonder about. So thank you very much. Um, So here's some ways that you can uh, tell me those things. So first, uh, you could write me an email. I now have an email for the book, and it is leandralibrary at gmail.com. And Leandra's name is spelled L-E-A-N-D-R-A, just like it sounds. So it's leandralibrary at gmail.com. Or you can call me on the Google voicemail, um, and that is just a phone number. You won't have to talk to a person. It's just a voicemail. So you can call 646-847-8758. If you're listening on the Anchor app, which is the host for my podcast, uh, you can just leave a message there. It's built into the app there. So if you're somehow on that app, which I don't think most of you are, but if you are, leave a message there. That's super easy. And just one other thing to note, uh, there's now a web page for the podcast on my website. And uh, what might be important to note there is if you, after you listen to the podcast, if you want to read 
the words yourself or have a, a parent read to you or just want to look at something or remember something or be reminded of something, each of the chapters will be posted on that website. So you can read those again there, or if you'd rather just read it, you can do that too. That's also absolutely possible. Um, so that address is emilyrainbowdavis.com slash reading the library book. So again, it's Emily Rainbow Davis. That's me. That's my name, my full name. And yes, it is my real name. EmilyRainbowDavis.com slash reading the library book. And it, the chapters will be there. And also there's a thing, I'm not sure how it's going to work or if it works, but if it's interesting to you, check it out. And there's a thing called uh, Listeners and Readers, which is a way to kind of join a community around the book. So you can see if that's interesting to you. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So l check it out, uh, read it if you like, and I will see you next time for Chapter 4. <laughs>